Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So today, um, I might be pushing this video a little bit. I'm not quite sure. Um, what I've got to show you today, I've got it in my head, whether I can convey that to the, you know, you guys in a way that makes sense or not, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Anyhow, so in the last couple of videos I've been doing, um, you know, I had the microscope and the TV out and everything, and we were looking at different edges off of mostly oil stones. So the Norton Crystalline, the, the India, um, the uh, Natural Whetstone Company Soft Arc. Uh, I think we did the Soft Arc, and then we skipped straight up to a Dan's uh, Translucent Hard Arc. And... Um, you know, I sharpened the knife and then we looked at it underneath the microscope and you got to see the scratch pattern from the stone on the steel. And then we did some rope cutting uh, tests on a bathroom scale. And, um, you know, we got to see what type of an edge, uh, you know, how many cuts it was getting in a piece of rope, uh, the amount of force used to, uh, to get those cuts, um, you know, and, and just a whole bunch of fun stuff like that, right? Well, I got to thinking about it. Okay, so I'm known for liking fairly toothy edges. Okay, so, you know, my, my favorite edges, um, in no particular order nowadays, used to be the DMT-325 was my favorite. Now that gap is getting closed up quite a bit by some of the oil stones now that, uh, now that I know how to use uh, loose silicon carbide powder to maintain everything. But, you know, my favorite edges are uh, the DMT-325, the Smith 325 Both of those are la uh, labeled as a coarse stone. Um, the, uh, the Norton Fine India, which is labeled as a fine, but it's also about a 300, 350 grit, which is kind of odd. That being a, that's a fine grit at 325, or 300 to 350, and 325 is a coarse in diamonds, right? Kind of odd. Um, the uh, the fine crystalline um, stone that you know the yeah the fine crystalline stone and then a soft or a hard Arkansas stone lapped to a 220 grit finish so those are my favorite edges right now now you know just because those are my favorite I mean you know if you've got a stone that you know that's a little bit in you know outside of that doesn't mean it's a bad stone it's just those are the edges that, that I personally like. Um, and I'm hoping to get part of why I like those edges with this video. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. So a toothy edge. What does a toothy edge mean? So every edge has got teeth in it. Okay, so when I was a kid, you know, I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about sharpening pocket knives. I mean, I did have you know, a pocket knife very similar to this uh, Victor Knox Tinker. Um, it wasn't this exact one. It was probably a Victor Knox though, and I'm not sure if it was a Tinker or not, but it was, uh, it was a multi-tool, right? So, also back then, when I was a kid in high school, uh, you know, the, the high school regulations probably said that we weren't supposed to carry knives, but just about every male kid there at the high school had a pocket knife on him. Almost all the teachers did, you know. I mean, I thought it was fairly common knowledge. It was, I think it was one of those things that the teachers saw it, they were supposed to say something about it, but they just kind of looked the other way as long as, you know, you were doing something appropriate with your pocket knife, like sharpening a pencil or eating your lunch or doing whatever, right? So it was a uh, biology class, and we got the microscopes out and we were looking at things. And I, I can't remember what exactly we were supposed to be doing, but I remember looking at this microscope and thinking, hey, you know, I just sharpened my pocket knife. I wonder what that edge looks like. And that, that knife was sharp. I mean, I can't remember what I sharpened it on, but it would take hair off my arm real easy, you know, cut newspaper, all that kind of stuff. And I put that blade up underneath the microscope, and you guys saw what the, the last couple of videos are. I mean, it looks just jagged and toothy as can be. Well, that's kind of what it's supposed to look like, right? So, all edges have got tooth to them. Now, the amount of tooth is dictated by what grit of the stone that you're using and the condition of that stone. 
okay? So if you were to take a, well, like we uh, looked in the last couple of videos, if you were to take a, um, a hard Arkansas stone and lap it to 220 grit and sharpen a knife, you know, you get a nice toothy edge that's also a fine type edge, okay? Um, but if you take that same stone and you glaze it over, and then you sharpen your knife, and then you look back up underneath um, underneath the microscope, you'll see all them teeth are quite a bit smaller and closer together, okay? So when you say a toothy edge, most of the time people are talking like a coarser toothy edge, okay? Is that about as clear as mud? Okay, so your general range of your sharpening stones go from, um, you know, about 100 grit-ish on a Norton... Um, uh, crystalline, the coarse side, all the way up to, you know, heck, I've got stones in my collection, uh, the Nanawa 12,000 grit. Uh, I mean, 12,000 grit, that's a really, really fine edge. And that edge for me is reserved expressly for straight razors. That's the only time I would ever need an edge like that. Okay. But um, without a microscope, it's really tough to tell what a toothy edge looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some saw blades to kind of help us uh, to take a look at this in something that you can see on the on the camera, right? Okay, so what I've got here is a whole bunch of saws. Okay, now you're going to have to, to use your imagination here a little bit because a saw is not a knife and a knife is not a saw, but we are going to use a saw to explain the edge on a knife. Okay, so a saw, let's grab this big one. Okay, saws are meant for cutting on a draw, okay? Either a forward cut or a backward cut, you know, saws are meant to cut on, uh, they're meant to cut with movement, forward and backward movement, okay? So this right here is a carpenter saw that I picked up. Actually, I probably shouldn't have hit it that hard. I just sharpened up this saw. Kind of screwed it up when I sharpened it, but I'll fix it next time. Um, this is a carpenter type saw, right? Okay, now you'll notice that you should be able to see these teeth really well even through the GoPro, okay? Now this right here, I wrote down a six. Um, I measured these. So the uh, saw blades are measured in teeth per inch. So what you do is you take uh, a ruler and you mark off an inch and you can, you know, you can mark off the steel or just hold them up together and then count how many teeth points are in that inch and that gives you your toothiness gauge, right? Okay, so that's tooth, teeth per inch. So this is a saw and this is a saw, but they're totally different teeth per inch, right? Now the steels in the saw are made out of um, similar steels, right? Okay, but right now we're just talking about teeth per inch and how toothy things are. This saw right here is meant for cutting um, lumber, you know, two by fours um, and, and fairly rough lumber at a six tooth per inch uh, pattern. Okay, so we're talking like um, like a construction worker, you know, if they still used hand saws, would be using a saw like this. Uh, framers, you know, guys that are, are building um, interior and exterior walls out of two by fours where you just need to cut a two by four, you need the two by four to be, you know, the same length as the one before, plus or minus, you know, a 32nd or 16th of an inch, right? Because you're just nailing the stuff together and you're gonna build a wall out of it, right? And the cuts don't have to be particularly clean looking because you're gonna be covering this wall with uh, siding on the outside and drywall on the inside, right? Okay, so this is a rough cut type of saw. A saw like this, this one, now there's no way that I'm going to actually count the number of teeth on this without reading glasses, but, um, and of course I did a test cut and, and wiped the, the lettering off. We'll go with this one. Okay, this one is a 24 tooth per inch saw blade, right? Okay, so this is for cutting um, much harder materials but it also cuts an awful lot slower than this, this big rip, uh, you know, uh, rough type saw, right? Now, 
Now I know saws do have some other differences, okay? Not only do you have the number of teeth, but you've also got the number of, you know, the amount of set. So each one of these, these teeth are set over from one side to the other, okay? And what that does is, you know, as these teeth make a little cut of wood, um, that set kind of widens your cut so that the saw blade can pass through the, the two by four if that's what you're cutting. Okay, so this is the, so we, now we've got uh, teeth per inch as a measurement of, uh, you know, toothiness on a saw blade. Um, and we've kind of gotten into a little bit of, this is for a rougher cut, this is for a finer cut. Okay, now I am not a finished carpenter, uh, and I suppose I have uh, like a finished saw around here somewhere. I just couldn't find it. Um, but they do make saws that look very close to this. Um, they've usually got like a hard back and a much finer tooth per inch count. Um, they're still for cutting wood, but they're for like, like finish cuts. Okay, so like, uh, you know, a, a high-end carpenter is finishing out a cabinet or... Um, you know, trim that goes around a door or a window or something, you know, and he wants it to make, wants it to look really, really nice. So use a much finer tooth per inch saw for cutting wood like that. All right, so um, here, I'm not sure how this is coming in. Like I said, this is all clear in my head, but bringing it to you is a little. This is the chart that comes on the back. These are. Um, um, the bandsaw blades that I use in my, um, you know, the upright bandsaw over there that I use to cut blades out and uh, handle material and all that kind of stuff. So they're they're just bandsaw blades, right? But on the back here we've got a chart. Well, actually, on the front here we've got a chart also. This uh, particular one is a 14 tooth per inch uh, blade. Okay, um, it's designed to be cutting metals that are, or materials that are 3 sixteenths of an inch to 5 sixteenths of an inch in thickness. And it says it'll cut, uh, can't quite remember the word for that stuff, uh, like channel stuff. Um, rebar, uh, looks like pipe, uh, copper, um, angle iron, and pretty much anything else, right? Okay, so this 14 tooth per inch saw blade Typically, I use this for, um, you know, cutting out annealed uh, sheet metal, or not sheet metal, because I get my, like my 1095 in big sheets, you know, three by eight sheets, okay, so I'll, I'll cut, um, you know, cut strips out of that big sheet with this type of blade, and then cut the profiles of the blades out with this while the steel is soft before it's been hardened or anything, okay? And this does a pretty good job of it. But you can see there's a chart on the back. Um, 10 teeth per inch, uh, they say is good for the softest materials. Um, 14 tooth per inch is softest, a little bit of hard, harder, um, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so wouldn't it be really nice if we could get that same sort of a uh, a guide for our pocket knives, okay? And I think that's kind of where this video is going. Um, first of all, there's no such guide that I know of. Um, the reason for that is everybody is, is quite a bit different in how they use a knife, okay? So I told you guys a story probably in a long, a long time ago in a video about how I found the edge that I liked the most. And what it was, was, um, I'll tell it real quick again. My wife and I, well, we live in, in Wyoming. Wyoming is cowboy country, right? Okay, so there's an awful lot of cattle, uh, sheep, uh, horses, you know, things like that around here. Well, we also live here in Cheyenne, and here in Cheyenne we have what's called the uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days, okay? They call it the daddy of them all, okay? So apparently it's a fairly big rodeo type thing. And at the rodeos, you'll see cowboys, you know, they get on their horses and they, um, you know, some of them rope, and I'm not a cowboy like that. I mean, uh, so I'm not really too up on all the names of the different races. But they'll, you know, race the horses back and forth. They'll do like barrel racing and then they'll do like roping. And then um, they've, and all of these different, 
sports, kind of, are based on a job that a cowboy might have to do during his day-to-day -day work, which, you know, so it's kind of like practice for their, for their normal job, right? Okay, so I'd never been to a rodeo before. I mean, I was, I don't know, 20, 23 years old, something like that. Never been to a rodeo before. So this was actually my first rodeo. My wife got tickets through her work to go to this thing, and we were like, well, we don't have anything else to do that day, so we went ahead and we went. Um, my personal feelings aside a little bit, um, we went to the, the calf roping, uh, contest. Okay. And I understand that this is what cowboys do on a day to day basis. Um, I didn't particularly care for it as a, like a spectator sport. Um, it didn't seem to me like they were kind of rough on the, the, um, the calves. Okay. So these were, I think they, the announcer said they were like 400 pound calves, right? And they had a big arena, you know, they had fences around it, and they would let this calf loose, and this calf would run across the arena, and then when he got out, you know, 20, 30 feet or so, they would let the cowboy and his horse out, right? And that cowboy would, you know, chase this calf down, and he'd take his rope, and he'd sling it around his head, and he'd uh, throw the loop around the calf. Once it got around the calf, he'd tie it off to his saddle horn, stop his horse, and that calf, you know, it's running and all of a sudden it gets stopped, right? So you can imagine it like go flips up in the air and then comes thundering to the ground, right? Well, by the, almost by the time it hits the ground, that cowboy is off his horse. I mean, these guys are fast. I mean, like insanely fast, right? So they like stop the horse and then while the calf is still in the air, they're jumping off the horse and running to there, right? So almost by the time that calf hits the ground, the cowboy's got another rope in his back pocket or whatever, right? And he gathers up the legs, ties them all together, and then once the calf is completely tied up, you know, he stands up and that's the end of their time, right? So this cowboy, um, apparently he was really good. The announcer said something about, you know, him being amazing or something, right? And he looked like he was mighty fast, but he, you know, came out, roped the calf, stopped his horse, jumped down off the horse and made it halfway to the calf and he must have heard something so he turned around and he looks and the rope is tied up or it's wrapped around his horse's front leg so they said the calf was 400 pounds the horse i'm guessing is a thousand fifteen hundred pounds right that's an awful lot and the calf is on the ground and the horse is freaking out because there's this rope tied around its leg right <coughs> Now that's an awful lot of strain on that rope. All that strain is um, concentrated around the, the, the horse's uh, front leg. You can imagine that would probably break a horse's leg pretty easy or at least sprain it or something. And these are some pretty high dollar horses that these guys are using. So the cowboy decides to cut the rope, all right? So out comes his pocket knife and he goes to cut the rope and it doesn't cut. So he proceeds to saw and hack and just mangle this rope to get it to part, right? Now, typically speaking, the more amount of pressure you have on a rope, the easier it is to cut, okay? And I can't imagine that, that a man that makes his living with ropes and horses and cattle is going to carry a dull knife. I mean, that just seems, seems odd to me, right? So that got me thinking there in the stands. I'm like, you know, there's been an awful lot of times that I've sharpened up a knife and spent extra time on it and got it really super sharp. I mean, it just pop, I mean, scare hairs off my arm, right? But then I'd go cut a chunk of rope and the edge would just slip right off the rope. I mean, it wouldn't really cut it. So I spent like a whole day with one knife and every stone that I had in the shop and a coil of rope. I mean, I must have cut up 30 foot of rope that day. I'd sharpen the knife, test it on my arm. I also went bald, I mean, on both my arms and most of my legs also, right? So I'd sharpen up a knife, get it shaven sharp, and then I'd cut a piece of rope and see how it felt. And then I'd take another stone and I'd sharpen it up and cut a piece of rope and see how it felt. And what I found was that 200 to 400 grit was the sweet spot for me where it was a fine enough edge that it felt to me like it was nice and sharp, um, but it also cut the rope aggressively and for a good amount of time. Um, 
if you are building a straight up rope cutting machine, okay, so like let's say you wanted to make um, a dedicated knife for cutting seat belts, okay, for like a, um, you know, a paramedic or somebody like that, right? You would want to stay a little bit on the coarser side, okay, because pretty much what that does is it turns that knife into a serrated knife only without the scallops in it, okay? It makes a knife that basically is like a six tooth per inch, you know, ripping saw, okay? It, it's a specially purposed edge, edge at that point, but it will rip the ever-living crap out of rope, uh, webbing, anything like that, okay? So think about that when you're, when you're, when you're sharpening, and then when you're using the knife, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day work, okay? So think about like a saw blade in your tooth per inch type deal, okay? So what you would do is to find your perfect edge and to find the amount of tooth that you like, okay? Start off with a Norton Crystalline um, combination coarse fine, okay? That stone right there, you guys know my, my love affair with that stone, all right? I mean, you've got 100 grit 100 grit ish on the coarse side which means you can shape anything really fast and then you've got the fine grit on the other side which is a really good working class edge okay take your pocket knife you know whether it's a you know a, a victor Knox uh, tinker you know like what i carry every day or whether it's you know a custom you know liner lock or you know maybe a benchmade 940 or something like that but put that coarse edge on it you know, put the coarse edge on it. Take, I mean, it'll take hair off your arm, even with the coarse side. You know, it'll cut newsprint. It's a little on the uh, aggressive side for cutting like newspaper and stuff, but it'll do it. It's also a little bit on the aggressive side for shaving hair, but it'll still do it. So put that edge on your knife and then, you know, go work with your knife for one day. Whether you're, um, whether you're cutting cardboard boxes at work or zip ties or... Um, you know, whether you're a butcher and, you know, you're cutting meat all day long, or if you're a handyman and you're cutting drywall and you're, uh, you know, um, you know, trimming off the piece, ends of trim or opening boxes, cutting open, uh, you know, the, the plastic on like a paint bucket or something like that. But try that 100 grit edge out for a day or two or three and see how you like it. More than likely, it's going to be a little on the coarse side for your taste, right? So then go to the fine side of that Norton Crystalline, put a decent edge on it with that one, and then go ahead and use that all day long. That edge, I bet you are going to like an awful lot, right? Well, now you've got two edges to compare to. You've got that 100 grit and you've got that 320, 320-ish grit, okay? Now you can decide, okay, well, you know, I thought the, um, the 100 grit was too coarse, and I thought the 320 grit was a good working edge. Now you can decide, okay, well, do you want to try something a little bit finer? If you want to try something a little bit finer, go to like a, I mean, just a little bit finer, go to like a Norton Fine India, which is, oh, yeah, 350-ish, 400 grit, something like that. Um, or you can try out a uh, Japanese Waterstone, you know, like the, um, uh, my favorite, well, I've got two favorite Japanese Waterstones. One of them is Discontinued, I think, which is the, uh, my Suhiro... 1.6. Um, I think the newest version of that is the Cerax, but I don't have one of those stones to be able to recommend it. Um, the other one is the uh, King. I just picked one up for a friend of mine. He hadn't picked it up yet. The King KW-65. Okay, that's a 1,000 grit and a 6,000 grit combination stone. I like those for razors an awful lot. Um, you know, pick that one up and try out the 1000 grit side. See if it's fine enough for your taste. If it's, if it's a little bit too fine, then, you know, drop back to that, that Norton Fine India. If it's not fine enough, then go to the 6000 grit side. You know, so just play around with your, with your different grits and in the amount of work that you do. Um, like I said, well, you guys know me, so I'm a, I'm a knife maker, but I'm also an outdoorsman. Um, and I'm also a, um, uh, I guess you could call it a hobbyist butcher, you know, I mean, I uh, work up, I'd say probably 70% of the meat that goes across my family's kitchen table. So uh, cows, sheep, uh, hogs, uh, 
elk, deer, antelope, small game, fish, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I end up cutting an awful lot of flesh and hide, um, and I guess you'd call it scales with fish, um, an awful lot of that, and then I do an awful lot of handymanning. So, um, you know, all the stuff that you cut during the course of a, a working day is handyman. So let's say you're, um, I don't know, you're, you're going to install a new exterior door at a place, right? So you run to Home Depot, you grab the door, you come back, um, you know, the door's got packaging on it, you know, plastic, um, you know, those plastic, kind of like a zip tie, but more like a band. So you got to cut those out. You got to cut the cardboard that's off of it, right? Um, and then you, uh, you go ahead and remove the old door. And maybe there's a couple of spots, you know, where, you know, you need to, you need to just shave a little bit of wood off to get it to close or something, you know. So you do all that sort of stuff. Um, and, the, you know, then you might be painting a house the next day or you might be, um, you know, using your chopper to uh, trim some trees around the outside of it, you know, you know, whatever you do as a handyman. But anyway, so you, you just sharpen up your knife and you test it doing the work that you want to do. Now, a lot of stuff that'll be, okay, so like the biggest things that'll affect the type of edge that you like. We know that saws and their teeth per inch, okay, that they are designed to cut with movement, okay? So this saw right here, if you were to just, if you were to just press it down on something, it's not really going to cut. I mean, the points will sink down into the material, but it's not actually going to cut it because, well, it just won't cut it. I mean, it's just, it's not moving, so it's just going down. Okay, so it won't cut anything unless it's moving back and forth, right? So what I found is that anything that is cut on movement um, benefits from having teeth. Okay, now how um, the number of teeth, you know, is dependent upon the material you're cutting. So the softer materials typically like more or fewer teeth. And the harder materials typically like, uh, did I say that right? Softer materials typically like fewer teeth. Harder materials typically like more teeth. That is on the back of our bandsaw chart, right? Okay, that correlates really well to knives. Anything that cuts mostly on a push, okay, either a push or a pinch, okay, so like a pocket knife, Pocket knife can be both, depends on how the, the person holding the knife cuts, okay? Whether they like to cut, like, uh, let's say you're sharpening a pencil, right? Okay, well, if you angle your blade and cut like this, felt like my knife was dull there for a second. If you angle the knife and cut like this, what you're doing is you're creating a draw, okay? So you start here, but you end here. So the, the edge is, is, you know, moving across the, the material. If you cut like this, where you just shear it, okay, that's a push cut. Push cuts generally like finer, um, you know, more teeth per inch, okay? So a finer edge or a more polished edge, okay? Um, so pocket knives can be both depending upon how you like to use the knife. Things like scissors, um, garden shears, um, kitchen shears, you know, anything where you've got, uh, yeah. okay, so anything where that blade is not moving, you know, across whatever it is that you're cutting. So I ought to cut a pencil pretty well. See how that blade is not moving? So it's shearing that pencil, okay? So something like that will benefit from a finer, more polished edge. Um, scissors are the same way. You know, scissors cut on a pinch um, or a shear, not on a draw, okay? So that sort of stuff likes polished edges. Things like chisels, um, you know, those are getting pushed through material, you know, generally speaking, with the help from a hammer. Those, generally speaking, uh, like a more polished edge. Like if you talk to like a finished carpenter or something, those guys really polish their chisels. I mean, they are a really, really, I mean, they'll use those water stones, you know, or 
like a uh, translucent or a black Arkansas stone. And you know, they're wanting a 6,000 grit edge plus, you know, very polished because they're shearing through material. They're not drawing through material, if that makes any sense. Okay, so the big takeaways for, um, for this video, I think, are going to be um, think of your the toothiness in your edge like a saw, okay? Um, I mean, the numbers won't correlate. So like a six tooth per inch, I really doubt that you're going to get a six tooth per inch finish on a pocket knife, okay? But still, your, your grit rating, so like a 325, think of that as being 325 teeth per inch on that pocket knife. Okay, or a thousand grit would be a thousand teeth per inch on that pocket knife. They might not exactly correlate and they probably don't, but that's a good way to think about it in your head. So you can decide, okay, well, that thousand grit edge was a little bit too fine for me, so maybe about half of that is what I'm after. Well, about half of that would be like a soft Arkansas, right? Okay, so there's that. Um, the way that you cut with a knife, whether you cut on a draw or you cut on a push, you know, that will dictate an awful lot about what kind of knife or what kind of edge that you want. Think about the tool that you're sharpening, okay? Whether you're sharpening a pair of garden shears or you're sharpening a chisel or you're sharpening a pocket knife and how that tool cuts will give you a good indication of what type of finish, you know, how many teeth that you're gonna want on that particular tool. Um, and the last thing is that there is nobody that can tell you what your favorite edge finish is going to be, except for you, which is why, I, you know, a biggest part of the reason why I say you should sharpen your own knife, okay? I told you, the edges that I like uh, the most are the, well, I've told you that plenty of times, okay? The reason that I like those, that I know that I like those edges the most is because I've got quite a bit of experience with each one of those edges. Sharpen up a knife with whatever edge, go out and use it. Use it cutting insulation, cutting rope, cutting cardboard, cutting, uh, you know, field dressing deer, uh, you know, cutting up a, a, a cow, um, you know, just, uh, just all sorts of stuff, right? And that's about the only way you're going to find out what edge suits you the best, okay? Um, so I hope I made that about as clear as mud. Uh, it's still clear in my head. Whether it's clear to you guys or not, I'm not sure. You'll have to tell me, you know, hey, Joe, you really nailed it on this video. Or, Joe, yeah, think about it another week or two and then shoot another one. So, again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you um, spend some time sharpening and, um, you know, using your knife and deciding what grit um, of an edge finish suits you the best, suits you and the, the work that you typically do in a day with that particular tool the most spend some time with it and um, it'll pay you pay off big time okay uh, we will see you guys next time